Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Williams and I would like to walk you through this website that provides some information about the different types of VEX IQ parts. So let's get started. The first thing you'll see if you scroll down is that there are three main types of parts or three categories you can divide the parts into. The first one is the electronics. This is, would be all the wires, the brain, the motors. I'll walk you through that one in a minute. The second one would be structure. And this would be all the beams and all the pieces you build the structure of the robot with. And the third one would be motion. This is everything that moves or helps something move. So let's go ahead and walk through these three types of parts. So I'm gonna go up here to this electronics page and you will see that the first thing we're going to look at is the brain. So the VEX IQ brain, it has a radio card right here. Depending on the color of the card, depends on how old that brain is. The blue card is the newest radio card for the first generation brain. It's very important that this card matches the card that's on the bottom side of your joystick. So if you have a blue radio card in your brain, you need a blue radio card in your joystick. So obviously the joystick and the brain are gonna talk to one another. And in order to do that, you tether them with a blue ethernet cable. And that is all described in this video right here. So once you connect the joystick with the brain with the blue ethernet cable, the radio cards will be introduced and they know how to talk to one another. You also need batteries to make your robot run. Of course, we need electricity. So you're gonna take this battery and you're gonna slide it into the battery charger. If it's red, it is not fully charged. And when it turns green, you have a full charged battery. It's very important that you don't leave that battery on the charger overnight or for longer than the amount of time it takes to get a full charge because it can start to deteriorate that battery cell and then it won't hold a charge for as long. If you put a battery onto the battery charger and it flashes red, then it's so dead that it cannot hold a charge. So there is a way to manually pump some electricity into that battery by spinning a wheel that is attached to uh, a motor that's plugged into the brain, obviously the battery's in the brain, and you turn that wheel manually and pump energy into the battery. Once you see that brain kind of light up a little bit when you're pumping that wheel, that's connected to a motor, that's connected to the brain that has a battery in it. Once you see that light start kind of flash on the brain, then the battery has enough charge to go onto the charger and it will um, start to charge. There is more information about this in a video explaining it on the troubleshooting page of the VEX IQ Clawbot site. This is what the motors look like right here. Let me move my face out of the way. This is what a smart motor looks like. And then of course we have these smart cables. They have little clips on the end. You can see the little clip is gonna go on that bottom side. So the smart cables are gonna clip into the motor and they're also gonna clip into these ports on the brain right here. And there are 12. You have six on one side and six on the other. So that's the basic parts you will need for your electronics. If you're going to code, you will also need this black USB cable and that is, there'll be more information about that on your website. Okay, let's move on to the structure. On the structure, you will see that uh, basically we have beams and the beams are named by the number of holes they have in them. So this beam is two wide and it looks like about 20 long. So it will be a two by 20. Here we have one that's two by four. Here we have a two by two. And so the beams are num numbered by the number of holes wide and number of holes long. If you wanna learn more about how to use these beams, you can go ahead and click on that website right there. There's also one by beams. And so we've got again, one by the length of the beam. Now let's look at some corner connectors. Now corner connectors are how you will connect your beams at a 90 degree angle to one another. And so you have a variety of different types of corner connectors, as you can see, some with two holes, some with a single hole, some with connectors on both sides, some with connectors on one side. And these will connect to the beams 
using these little pins that are on the connectors, but also using these blue pins right here. And you can see that there are three different sizes of blue pins. You have what I, I call this a single single, because it's going to go through one hole and one hole. You can see this is a single double. This can go through two beams on this side and one on this side. And here we have a double double. So you got two beams that can fit on that side and two beams or any other structure piece that will fit on that side. If you want to learn more about how to use VexIQ connectors and standoffs, click on that link right there. Now standoffs are these parts right here and they keep the exact distance between two beams. So if you want two beams to be an inch apart, you're going to use one that's an inch in length. These of course are measured not by inches, but by the number of holes you have in there. So this would be a 4x standoff. This one would be a 2x standoff. All right, let's go ahead and move on to motion. There are more parts, but you can, um, you know, you'll see them in your kit and you can look at the poster to try and figure out what they are. So motion, this is anything that has, that's going to spin. So here we have wheels. And this is the type of wheel that comes in the Vex IQ kit. They're the standard driving wheels that you will use on any of the robots that you make with directions. Over here, you will see that these are Omni wheels. Now, Omni wheels have a rollers on the side. We often use these in competition robotics to help reduce the friction when the robots are turning on the field, but it does make them kind of slippery. So you have to decide which wheels are best for your build. So now let's talk a little bit about drive shafts. So drive shafts are these long pieces that will go into the center hole of the wheel or into the center hole of a gear right here. And so these are plastic shaft uh, drive shafts and the plastic drive shafts, some of them have little caps either here or at the very end. You can use those without that end piece, which is called a shaft collar. I'm going to talk about that one next. So if you have a plastic piece with an end cap, you don't need to put a shaft collar on, the cap will hold it in place. They are not, however, as strong as these metal drive shafts. Now these drive shafts are, of course, made of metal, so they're much stronger, and they come in a variety of lengths. In competition robotics, we actually can cut these to the right size. It's the only part that you can modify in competition robotics. If you do cut, and they do sell 12 inch metal axles that you can cut. You have to make sure that the ends are nice and filed with a file so there's no sharp edges. And coaches, I would say that you would cut these either with a hacksaw or a Dremel, but please make sure the coaches are cutting and filing before you give them to the students. Here you have a shaft collar. Now a shaft collar is made of plastic and it slips, this hole slips right onto the drive shaft. And sometimes when it's really cold, they're hard to slip on. So you just kind of warm them up in your hands and then they should slip on pretty fine. And they hold the wheels and the gears in place. Now let's talk about the two types of gears. So these are spur gears, they've got little teeth and they line up like this, they mesh together. So one gear moves the other gear. It's very important that they line up perfectly. So one tooth is going to push the next tooth like that. They have different size uh, gears here, and we determine the size by the size of our teeth. So we've got in the super kits, we've got a 12 tooth gear, which is going to be this little small one, a 26 tooth gear, which is the number of teeth around here, which would be this one. We have a 60 tooth gear, which is this big one right here. And then these are crown gears. They have a little bit of an angle to them. Looks like a crown on top of somebody's head. Now let's talk about sprocket gears. So sprocket gears have teeth that are much bigger and the teeth don't mesh together like spur gears. The teeth go inside of chain like on a bicycle. So the gears can be spaced out like this with chain that connects them. So these are sprocket gears. They do not come in the Vex IQ kits. You would have to purchase them separately. We often use the chain and sprockets in competition. And sometimes we even use these tank treads and these tank, tank tread flaps that go onto the tank treads as almost like a conveyor belt that will bring in different game pieces. So these are the basics that you need to know about the Vex IQ parts, but um, there are many more. 
One thing you can do to learn about all the different parts that VexIQ offers is just go to their website. So you'll see right here, if you want to purchase any additional parts, I have a link right here, the VexIQ products website. You can filter by motion, structure, electronics, or just look at all the products and you can see what there is to purchase. Now in VexIQ, we can only use parts that are functional that come from the VexIQ website. And also, if you need a little help about how to program or build, there's a lot more resources in the VEX IQ STEM library. Go ahead and check that out. Now, many coaches ask me, how do you store the parts? And we have found that it is much easier to store all of the like parts in a bin together. So here's one strategy. We use those plastic shoe box bins, and we actually just printed out a picture of this from the CAD files that appears on the VEX IQ product website. And so you can just easily write with Sharpie the name of this. Is it a two by 20 beam? But these pictures are pretty helpful. We use a baker's rack to store all the parts. And so you can see this is a great organization system. We also purchase some tackle boxes or toolbox organizers for some of the smaller parts. And this top lid that comes in the Vex IQ kit is also handy to organize small parts. Another system, if you're interested, and this one is sold at Harbor Freight, um, looks like this and it can store pretty long parts. You can put it up on top of a desk. Um, sometimes we have problems with these bins kind of coming off the edge that they're hanging on, but this is uh, not too expensive from Harbor Freight. And you can see they also purchased some either tackle boxes or parts organizers for the corner connectors. All right, so that's it. Um, good luck getting to know your parts. And don't forget there is a poster that comes in the VEX IQ kits that will help you identify the parts in the kit. All right, good luck.